Welcome to Mixed Media Creations with me, Creative Katie. Check out what I'm up to day to day by following me on Instagram, www.instagram.com backslash Creative Katie. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and select the option to get notified as soon as a new video is uploaded. That way you won't miss any. Today we have Index Card of Day number 25. Five more to go after this one. This one's entitled Breathe. Links to my Amazon store can be found below. You can find products that I use in this video and products that I love. Thank you for shopping there. So, trying to break out of the purple, pink, blue, green color scheme, and as you can see, after one short ICAD that was a total different color scheme, I'm kind of back in that zone. But I, when I started this, I wanted to make an underwater ICAD. And you'll see what happens. Right here, I blended a little too much, and you don't see the distinction of the colors. So, you know, what I should have done is dry it and then come back and allow add more color and then I would get the different colors. I'm not too worried about the brush marks. I plan on putting a stencil on top of this and you're just going to see little bits of this blue green peeking through. So I'm giving this a good dry with my Ranger heat tool. And a few touch-ups of where I kind of missed, didn't get any paint. So I grabbed this stencil, and I can't remember the name, but it is a Crafter's Workshop stencil. If I can find it in Amazon, I will link it. And I am going to put this on. Remember, I wanted an underwater scene. So I thought the, this stencil is just absolutely perfect for waves. So I taped down the stencil and I am using modeling paste here. And I believe this was the flexible modeling paste by Liquitex. It's a lot thicker than the Crafters Workshop light and fluffy modeling paste. Why did I take it for to this time? It, it just was there. I like all of them. Some take a little less time. The light and modeling, uh, modeling paste, light and fluffy modeling paste, dries a lot quicker than this one. But I like this one as well. This has been my favorite for many, many years. So using a palette knife, I just spread out the modeling paste and remove the stencil. And I absolutely love the white against the blue and I think you know maybe I should have left it there but I reapply the stencil and I'm going to make the wave part dark blue and I grabbed Dina Wakeley's night I ordered this and I basically forgot about it, that I had it and on camera it looks like I've always seen very dark blue and that's what I want it you know kind of Prussian blue and Payne's gray mixed together but in real life it it, it kind of took on a purpley tone and I didn't like it for this application So there, it, it doesn't look bad, but it, it, in real life, it just really struck me as purpley. And so I thought, okay, what can I do? What can I do? You know, am I going to go in with Payne's Gray? Am I going to go on top with Prussian Blue? I thought, okay, I could put some iridescent medium. And this is just Artist Loft iridescent medium. And I'm putting it on top.
and I figure this will just kind of lighten it a little bit. It pretty much dries clear, but give that little bit of shine. I'm kind of thinking I should have left it white. I really like that contrast with when, when it was white. But the good thing is I can you do a similar background and recreate this and try it a different way. As the quote says, sometimes we win, sometimes we learn. So I believe I grabbed Artist Loft Metallic Blue and I'm putting that on. I'm still not happy with the color that I have, but with this edition, I'm happy. Oh, I guess I, was, I didn't use the Artist Loft Metallic. This is the Prussian Blue, Deco Art Prussian Blue. I can't get away from it, people. I love, love, love this Prussian blue color. I just find it so, so amazingly versatile. Definitely my happy place. So now I'm happy with it, and I'm thinking, okay, which way I'm kind of turning it, because now... I'm not sure I want to do an ocean thing. It's not quite reading ocean to me. I want to play with this stencil and, and see. But when I covered the whole thing, somehow it just kind of lost it. So I'm edging this with some of the night paint just to frame the iCAD. So for the focal point, I decided to use a die cut of a hummingbird. I cut this with my silhouette that's just in my stash. And I like the white of this against the background. I remember I was kind of wishing that I had kept the white of the modeling paste. So I think I'm going to keep this white and now I'm just you know looking for sentiments that I can use with this and before I decide on my final composition. So I'm taking the night, the Dina Wakely night color and edging the card. This is just a makeup sponge and the more that I use my Ranger cut and dry foam the more dissatisfied I am with the makeup sponge because the makeup sponge it, it falls apart it's it, you know after a very short time so I found the sentiment breathe and I really liked how it's black and then it has that border of white around it, it goes really well with the hummingbird now while I like the white I didn't want to just leave it as it was so I decided that I'm going to do something in my mixed media that I very rarely do, but I've always wanted to do, is I'm going to use some embossing powder. This is kind of a pearlized embossing powder. And so I'm going to take the Versamark ink and stamp it all over this die cut. Now this die cut, I think, is just cut out of copy paper. So it is not the perfect substrate to be doing this with, but it, it does the trick. And I'm sprinkling it with the embossing powder. And then getting rid of the excess. And pouring it back into the container. I caution you, don't skip this step because if you do, you'll end up blowing it all around so I finally bought an embossing tool. I had the Ranger Heat Tool, which for most of my mixed media works perfectly great. It's quiet, but it doesn't do a great job of embossing. So I'm just trying, and you barely can see, you know, you really can't see it. 
there you can see it's turning, but it's white on white on white. So the effect of the pearlescence that I'm getting, you know, you really can't see on camera. And because the paper's so thin, it's really soaking into the paper as well, which is, is part of the problem. So it got a layer and I decided, you know, I want it a little thicker and I want a more solid coating of it. So I'm just re reapplying. Now, if you don't have embossing powders or don't want to go through this, you can, you know, I've got per Martha Stewart's pearlized paints and other metallic paints, or you can use, um, the Crafters Workshop Shimmery Goodness or Iridescent Medium that's in white. I really need to play more with embossing and using it um, in my mixed media. So being careful to not to pick it up when it's wet, still hot, and I just put it on there. Now, I'm wishing that I had in some way, shape, or form edged this. Other than using a makeup sponge and the archival ink, I don't know. And I, and I probably would have done it in blue. Um, but I didn't solve that problem until after this was done. So using the gel medium, and I'm trying to get this to glue down. And the gel medium really didn't work because the paper had curled because it was so thin. You know, if I had cut this hummingbird out of regular cardstock, it probably wouldn't have curled as much and I wouldn't have this, the struggles that I have. But you know, live and learn. And I left this in just to show you. I decided to leave that, put the phrase on. Loving that background. We'll definitely have to do a similar kind of treatment on an art journal page or a bigger canvas. And, um, try something else. So I reach for my Aileen's tacky, clear tacky glue. I haven't used it for a while, so it seems to be clogged. Ever have one of those crafting days? Part of the problem also is because I'm doing a video, I want to finish it up and get, get it done and I'm not giving things the proper weight of time. Here I should have just put, you know, paper on top and some something heavy on top and it would just hold it down, let it dry before I continue to touch it and, and do whatever else with it. Decided that it was a little too high. That's what I'm thinking, uh, you know, that I should have edged it. It's got a nice little shimmer from it, from the pearlized embossing powder. So now while, since I'm done this, I'm going to go outside and watch the hummingbirds in my yard. They provide great entertainment for me. We have at least between four and eight that visit our yard regularly. Oh, yes. I have to splatter with gold. And, of course, I get a big glob right off the bat. So I'm just splattering 
just to add a little bit and that kind of goes over everything and because the embossing powder it serves as a resist I know that I'll be able to take a baby wipe and very carefully get rid of any that are on the bird because I don't want it on the bird thanks so much for watching I'll see you for the next one bye